Dog Gadgets. Live! Well, happy Tuesday, everybody. I'm Josh from GrounddogGadgets.com. Ta-da! Thanks. As always, we've got a uh, wonderful producer, Pete, over hey, here. Hey, I'm a hand. Not just a hand, he's a real person with cats. Uh, oh, right here. Back to you. Wow. Uh, a rare appearance of, a, of a, a wild Pete has appeared. You got it. Uh, anyway, so we're here on a Tuesday to do more fun STEM activities. Uh, if you like what you see here today or want more information, resources, or parts, uh, you can check us all out at browndoggadgets.com or follow us on one of these many social media sources if, you know, you, you care to do those things. If you follow us, it makes us feel better in a superficial way. <laughs> so please do. Um, we already had a request from our live stream from a, a gentleman named Nolan. Nolan? Nolan? Uh, Evans, live stream. That's what to, we're doing. We're, we're giving it away. We're giving we're, it oh, away. This live stream is being given away. But also for Nolan, we give you the gift of love. Uh, anyway, <laughs> enough of this. It's oh. it's another live stream. I can you see why it. why TV personalities so often go bonkers. Uh, today we're making a fun. <laughs> three, oh gosh, let's uh, let's switch to the overhead view. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, green, green screen effect. Green screen. Green screen. Uh, uh, we're doing a classic works. Macintosh. That's right. A color, like a fun little Macintosh, like a Mac SE or a Mac Classic Two. Hey, Pete, those. do you have a, a, a example of what let these me, look like back in their heyday? Like this is the original like Macintosh. That, Say hello, right. hello to Macintosh. Hello, Macintosh. And then yeah. we've got our little one right here, uh, our little Macintosh that Pete put together. And to turn it on and off, we have this really, really cool. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, we got notes here. A A G. It means audio all good. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, your audio is good. Okay, we have this little tiny uh, floppy disk here. Insert the floppy into the computer. Don't copy that floppy. No. No. Oh. <laughs> Where it goes. Much like a real Macintosh, this thing will vibrate across yeah. your table. Maybe that was the. Uh, what is it? The. Uh, Josh, is your Macintosh running? <sighs> it is. You better it catch is. it. Would that be like the Apple Lisa or the uh, <laughs> the Apple Three? Yes. But the Apple III is the one you had to like pick up and drop to reseat the uh, the chips in it because it would overheat. Yeah. Chips would come dislodged. You had to pick yeah. it up and drop it five inches. Uh, I'm a nerd. We got uh, a comment here. Amy Zimmer. I may have one of those in my basement. Does she have an old classic Macintosh down there? Who knows? Probably a couple of those. Yeah, and my favorite, the Mac Color Classic. <laughs> classic. Because it's awesome. It is awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Amy, whoever yeah. you might be. Uh, excellent. So, wow, a lot of people. Uh, so, anyway. By the way, if you like what you see here today, again, you can find the directions and the step-by-step -step guide, the template for this, all on our website. You can use whatever resources or materials you have on hand, but we have directions on our website. And uh, if you have any questions, throw it up there because we do throw up questions and comments onto the screen while we're doing this, yeah. and we make this project. This is a pretty quick project. Um, I, I remember that this is just like a, a simple paper craft with a vibrating motor. We do a lot of these. We have our little self-sticking motors, our batteries, and we're using some little red LEDs that we just had in our shop. Uh, we just cut through down there so a little extra light. Um, but if you want to take this design and try it with something different, you can find tons of templates like this kind of format for like computers and just <laughs> kind of a dog under my desk moaning. Uh, not moaning, groaning. He's groaning. Snoring, I think. He, it's, it's nap time. But anyway, yeah. a bunch of these like all over the internet if you look for like uh, 3D templates for things. Yeah. We just made one up so we could have on the flip side uh, when you printed out the, the guide on the back of here. I know I have a bunch of the like random 3D designs from projects I did in my classroom years ago. I've got like yeah. a Domo Kun, a couple Macintoshes, some mm -hmm. like just random like random weird things, um, like Pac Man y stuff too on my computer from years ago. But they're out there. It's just doing this little step right here to yeah. get everything to connect together. Uh, so yeah, and as always, the fun little floppy not fl uh, floppy disk. It's a three and a three and a quarter. quarter yes, floppy disk. Because the original Macs didn't have a hard drive in them. You had to. Run them off the. That's right. When you turn it on, it wouldn't boot up until you put the floppy in, because the operating system was on the floppy disk. And this is a pretty simple format. History. So Pete did this. Uh, this version here it just doesn't even have any. Um, so I'm looking for here any tape on it. It's got a little slit that he put onto here. You could easily tape this together or glue this together. Mm -hmm. Like our like our robot buddies, we designed them to go together with a single piece of tape on yeah. the bottom. Um, yeah. So anyway, we're gonna build this little guy today. And yeah, uh, any questions, let us know. So let's get to going. So yay, classic Mac. Josh, if you have a problem with your computer, you may need to perform some percussive maintenance on it. Give it a good smack, right? <sighs> Only the Apple 3. <laughs> the follow-up to the Apple 2. Right. 
good times with Indeed. Apple history. Um, so anyway, so here's the template. Uh, Pete made this up. Uh, you could print this off. Uh, Pete, do we have a black and white version of this or just the color? Right now, there's just a color. We could we could do a black and white. Version. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so this is just cutting this out. of. We're using some uh, cardstock. This isn't super heavy cardstock, uh, probably like 60 pound. Um, this is what we use on our packaging, so we use it for all of our printing. It looks nice and it's glossy for camera work. On uh, the back side, we do have our directions, which are fairly standard for any of our 3D paper crafts. We're using our nylon conductive maker tape. Where, where, where are we here? There we go. Ready? Make your tape. Whoa! Whoa. Make your tape. Right. This is our nylon conductive tape. You need to use this. Do not use copper foil. It, it won't, won't work. It won't handle the stress, especially the uh, pressure push of the on and off tab. Right. That floppy disk we're using, as well as also we're um, it's conductive on top and bottom, so we can do sticky uh, rolls on the bottom here. We just do a bunch of extra little things that make this work. Copper foil cannot handle this, so do not use copper foil in general. Don't use copper foil. No copper foil. No copper foil. Be better than that, people. Be better than <laughs> copper foil. Uh, and then the rest was just, it's cutting and um, folding. We've got a little tiny, these are tiny little disc motors that we have. We use these in all of our projects and kits. Um, it's actually the size of the template. Uh, these are nice. We get these tweaked for us. They're sticky on one side. They have a little, uh, a little pull tab down here. You can pull and stick to stuff, which is great for projects. You could use uh, little barrel motors, but the problem is that little offset way on the end that would actually hit something. All the vibrations are internal on this, which is really, really, really handy. We also get these made with uh, extra exposed wire on the end because stripping the ends is impossible. Uh, yeah. uh, we're using a three millimeter, a three millimeter LED. Now let's. Uh, I'm going to show a little difference here. Pete, would you switch to the close up camera? You want a close up view? Close up huh? camera. Yeah. So here's a Ooh, 10 mil, my gosh. which and this is the three mil. And uh, there's a reason we're not using a 10 mil. Uh, it, the millimeters in uh, LEDs refer to the diameter. So typically, you see a lot of people use five millimeter. Uh, that's a pretty common one everyone uses. I don't think I have any on the table here with me. Uh, mm -hmm. But threes are a little bit less common just because they're really small. I mean, LEDs should all cost the same one way or the other. Show them the side view, sort of the leg. Yeah, so the – turn the other way, 90. So, the yeah, the legs are right on the edge versus a 5 millimeter. There's a little space kind of. Yeah, so and compared weird. to a 10, do I have one over here? Oh, I do have a 5 mil. Yay. Oh, there we go. Random 5. So here's a – a five and a three. Yeah. And the leg spacing is the same, but you can yep. see the difference, right? And yeah. if we're using a, a raw 10 mil, which I have a, I have a baggie over here somewhere of them. Uh, but the three mils are just handy in this situation because mm -hmm. we want a nice little tiny LED. Yeah, and well. our design is set up so you don't have to use uh, – we'll get away from that. You don't have to use an LED if you don't want to. Oh, back to uh, the – Oh, you want some overhead. Yeah, yeah. back to the overhead. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, we have the circuit lined up here. You could use Optional. one or both. You could just do an LED on it if you wanted to. You don't you even have to do the motor part. You could do this without the motor and just have an says LED. up at the top, oh. optional. Optional, look at that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can use a five as well. It might be a little big, but yeah. yeah. Don't use a 10. Uh, if one other cool thing we are talking about doing, if you wanted to really kind of mix this up a bit, you could say um, cut this out and put different, uh, like a, a desktop Screen, operating system yeah. or a picture in there. Sad Mac. Sad Mac. <laughs> Uh, if you had any sort of design skills, you could just take our template, you know, cut this out with Photoshop or Illustrator or something and put a different something else Picture in there. Picture of your dog, maybe. There you go. <laughs> or you could do something fun and put an LED on the inside make it kind of glow. Ooh, yeah. uh, we just thought it would be fun. A blinking LED would be kind of fun if you just wanted to use a naturally blinking LED in here mm -hmm. instead. So uh, whatever, whatever works. And um, if I was going to do something fun for my desktop, I totally would just put an LED on there and just put the disc in and – like a little blinking red LED will last days off of a coin cell battery. Oh, hold on. This guy says, what about uh, Oregon Trail? See, Andrew, that Oregon Andrew's Trail would be an perfect idea. because what Macintosh experience would be fun without that. Or Battle Chess. Yeah, Battle Chess. Battle Chess would be great. I've got a CD of that somewhere with my yeah. SCSI CD drive. Yeah. Where's so I, Carmen San Diego? Hey, can we oh, get man, Ken to stick a little screen in there that works? Oh, he totally could. Ken <laughs> from Tiny Circuits, who's clearly not going to watch this. Uh, <laughs> we should ask him for that because they have a fun little TV yeah. they make uh, with a little OLED screen on it that you can um, – you know, we used to live streaming with us, but you can actually yeah. show videos on it, little video clips. It's really cute. Uh, but he uses a 3D printed like 1960s TV yeah. um, that you paint and whatnot. Great for doll houses or other miniature projects, but that would be really cool for this. Um, really, really cool for this. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll ask Ken for a free one. No one ever you know, hashtag maker, maker tape. tape. You got nobody it, ever hashtags that maker is, tape. I, I check on Twitter every now and then. It's, it's like right oh, here. Whoa. So anyway, uh, 
Pete has so nicely put on with yeah. all of his directions. You can tell Pete directions on our website because they're thorough. <laughs> um, but he has put on here, use an X-Acto knife. That's probably the best way to cut this out. Uh, we did add a bunch of extra, t- like a bunch of tabs on here. I don't, depending on how you're building this, you don't really need all these tabs. Yeah. Um, Pete just did that overkill. Not overkill, but just you were thorough. It, Thanks, it's Sarah. kind of my, my base template, template, so I just copied yeah. it. Yeah. Our robot buddies eliminate like at least half of these because yeah. you don't need to do that in projects. I mean, you end up with little gaps every now and then, but yeah. for a lot of these things, it doesn't really matter. It's especially with kids. And then there's also the uh, key for the switch down here, the, uh, the little the diskette that we're using on here, uh, how to do that. And then, yeah, the only really thing you really need an exacto knife for, I would think, Pete, would be the uh, slit in the middle for yeah, the... Yeah, uh, that helps there. It really helps, which we don't have an exacto knife in here, so you could probably <laughs> go to get one. I can get one. Yeah, all right. So, again, you, you don't have to do it that way. That's just... you could do it many ways so anyway so let's let's build this puppy instead of talking about it all day let's let's uh let's build it so first off you want to cut the mag- things the magic. Clip, you want to cut, cut 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 oh my gosh oh that was so hard to cut all that out there oh. we go wow that was fast wow, so so the good magic of computers yay magic of computers yay did you already score this yeah <laughs> oh wow so pete actually pre like scores what do you use to score this pete i use uh, an exacto knife and a cork back steel ruler there you go, <laughs> which we have in the shop right away. But that's a really easy way of quickly scoring the edge, yeah. um, so you don't have to sit there with a like a f- flat edge and do this. If you have like a cameo silhouette or a, a Kira cut or something, we've done that with yeah. our robot buddies template yeah. to uh, quickly cut and score a bunch of things all at once. It's about a minute to cut out like something like this, um, cut it out and score it all on a blank piece of paper, which yeah. is really handy. And, and thinner paper, it, it, you don't really need to score. It's, it's just the thicker. It's hard to get yeah. a good bend. And that's still, you really want to use, honestly, you want to use a little thicker paper. Again, like 60-pound yeah. cardstock, which is pretty cheap and easy to get. It's good. Hey, Pete, would you grab an X-Acto knife? I will. And I'm going to get going on this guy. So, yeah, Pete's going to run to the other room. <laughs> so we've got here a uh, standard coin cell battery, CR2032, 3-volt. Uh, that's enough to get both an LED and this motor going. Ta-da. So we're going to, thanks, Pete. He didn't stab me either, which is always yeah, a I good thing to do with your trip. coworkers. I with it. So uh, first and foremost, we're just going to build this circuit up, but we're going to cut this out. I'm going to do a really horrible job on this. <laughs> now, Josh, one of the tips is to cut from the front so that things are lined up better, but you do what you want, oh. buddy. <laughs> now, Pete, this is something Pete has been saying a lot lately because we've noticed that with different printers in our office – we get different results when it comes to lining things up back to yeah. back on paper. It's not always perfect. It's not, uh, and some machines do it better. Same template, same settings, like same computer. It's just, it's weird. Okay. Are we having audio issues? Echo, echo, echo. Yeah, sorry, we have sometimes have echo on here. Just let us know if we if we have echo. Just, just type hashtag echo if you hear an echo. Uh, only sometimes, not all the time. It <laughs> must be that wonderful little headset you have there. Right. Josh, I've pointed out as well, if you don't have thicker paper, if you just got regular paper at your house, you can always uh, print and like uh, glue two pieces together. A oh, yeah. Thicker that, way. that works, too. I'm going to just kick you across the room or something, Pete. Pete's on that <laughs> side of the room, not next to me. Anyway, uh, once you have that done, and I'm just going to lay out maker tape. So uh, we're going to do... Always a little bit more than what we need. And this is our, our nylon conductive tape, which you can find on our website, amazon.com, robotshop.com, pretty much ed- any educational website. Just beats the pants off of uh, using copper foil because it's durable and conductive on top and bottom. That's right, people. Conductive on top and bottom. Pete's running away. Uh, so we're going to start here on this side because this is the important side. We're going to thread this through just a little bit, and we're going to come down and do a right angle little fold just to the middle of the middle of this battery. Not all the way, because uh, if you want to use an LED, you need to uh, not have that done. Ta-da. Oh, yeah. There you go. Middle of the battery, like so. Yay. And we have that done. Yay. And to make life simple for myself, uh, I'm just going to do I have a little extra tape here. We're going to show you how to do the tape loop approach to attaching this battery to the circuit. You just take a piece of tape like this, leftover tape, you make a loop, and you stick to the bottom of your battery because our maker tape is conductive on top and bottom through, through the adhesive. 
Yay. So if we do this, we can make a nice sticky battery for a paper craft project, which is a really easy way to add power to anywhere. Um, a bracelet, a window, a wall, uh, probably not a shirt because that would move around a lot. I guess same thing with, with uh, <laughs> a bracelet. Uh, but it's a really easy way to add uh, a battery to just a random spot on a project, which you can't do with copper foil. So just make sure you slightly line things up so your battery is over the top of your line of tape here. Now you've got a solid electrical connection. Ta-da. <whistles> Sound effects, which I can't hear because anyway. So then we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're just going to kind of, eh, whatever, a little bit more than what we need. Yeah. Allergy season. And here we go. I can remove tape. Yeah, I know the backing is nice if you're a teacher, so you can cut out ah. kids. It can sometimes be annoying if you're trying to get things off without fingernails because you cut them this morning. Same thing, you want to go through the slot that's there. Up, right angle turn, right angle turn, which Everyone gets annoyed when they don't do it perfectly. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna take one side now. I'm gonna take one side of my uh, battery right here, and just doesn't matter which side, red or blue. And I'm just going to stick it under the tape, then run the tape over the top of it a bit, so I have again strong electrical connection there. Yay! As long as it's over there, a decent amount. Press down a little bit. I've got one side on. I'm now gonna remove the sticky backing from my tape or not tape, from the battery. Ah. Just stick it down. Motor. Wow. It's a motor. Somebody call, like was telling me, like, you sent these batteries with wires to me today. I'm like, no, I didn't. It's a motor. <laughs> it says on the packaging. Anyway. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before, where we're going to just uh, use the sticky side of our tape here to hold down a part. And that's actually too much, even. I'm going to save that for later. Be a good snack. We don't need very much. There we go. We're just going to tape down our motor onto here. Ta-da. So our motor is connected on the bottom through this part of the circuit. I'm gonna zoom in a bit. There we go. I don't know why it's so far away. Uh, and then, yay. So if you want to test this out to make sure things are working, I'm just going to use some maker tape here randomly to just, there we go. I just. People can't hear you, Pete, because you put yourself on mute. Echo, echo, echo. 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 Well, you know. <laughs> wow. All right. We're just going to blame Andy on that one. So now comes the hard part, folks, the hard part. We're going to put the uh, LED through the paper. Uh, so you want to make sure that your LED is lined up properly. LEDs have a long and a short leg. The long is positive, short is negative. And so I am going to flip this over, and I'm going to attempt to push this through. Um, actually, uh, yeah, we have <laughs> we have our emergency safety pin here. It's, it's, it's in, in the instructions. instructions. <sighs> now, if you want to get really fancy, this is a number two safety pin. Ooh. I know. It's, they're numbered. We use these in a different kit we sell. So I'm going to make sure my long leg is on the same side as this. On the would be the right side when you're facing it. The left side when you turn it over. Long leg right there. Yay. And we're going to bend it over and bend this one down. Now, your LED leg is way too long for yeah. this space we have here. But luckily, these are really cruddy, like, solid core wire. Um, they're, they're LED legs. So you just bend it a bit there. And we're going to use one of these other pieces of random tape I saved from earlier. Ha-ha. We're just going to press it over the top here for a nice, solid connection. And if you're really, 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 really worried of, like, oh, I don't know if I made a good enough connection, blah, 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 blah. You can just use a little bit more maker tape and just more go over tape. Thing. More tape! When in doubt, just... More tape right there. More, more tape. tape. <laughs> just something big and gruffy on more tape. Pete, do we have more comments? No. <laughs> oh, those aren't appropriate comments? Let's keep going. <laughs> in appropes. A uh, little bit more than what we need here. Just going to then go from down, oh, down here, back up to the top. And then that should pretty much cover our internal stuff. We just have to make uh, up our... And that one, watch it over the bend. You may have to bend that leg back because it's right where the oh, paper bends. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. So what you can just do too is you can just... 
You know, I did Josh. I, I actually cut, cut mine with a pair of scissors, scissors when I did it, and that worked okay. If you don't have wire cut. No, I'm just going to bend this up. So it's not, as long as it's not making contact with this, uh, your other wire, you should be fine. Um, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. These are LED legs. They're pretty easy to manipulate or cut. You could use a pair of scissors to cut them even, I think, if you wanted to really get away with it. But you definitely want to make sure that this is covered. I think the instructions have a warning about cutting them and having the tiny piece of metal fly away, but, uh, you know. Oh, yes, don't. <laughs> safety first. And we're just going to, again, put this up on top. Oh, here, pro tip from Pat. Be, be bending them and they'll, they'll break. So oh, true, yes, like like a, a coat hanger. That's actually yeah, that's a good yeah. example. Like a, like a solid core. I guess coat hangers aren't metal anymore. Now. Yeah, I can't. I was watching a TV show. They broke out the coat hanger to get keys out of a gutter. I'm just like, who has a solid core coat Wait, hanger? A gutter? My parents, maybe? Uh, anyway, yes, that's how they were getting the keys that had fallen into a gutter. Um, so we're just going to do this. Does the LED turn on? No. I don't know. Backwards? It's backwards? Don't do it backwards. No, I actually did, uh, did it correct. Did you test it beforehand? No. Because <laughs> that would make sense. Oh, it's, it's lightly turning on. That's weird. Anyway, it's turning on slightly there. Maybe it's a bad LED. They have been sitting in our warehouse for the better part of like eight years <laughs> uh, without being used. Sometimes I press down a bit more on this spot right here. Just make sure everything is nicely connected. Ta-da. Then you got your little floppy drive here. Just want to fold that in half and you add a little bit of maker tape onto it. Um, how did you do your other one here? I'll just grab this one for convenience <laughs> sake. Ta-da, look at that. Just put a little bit on the end. Uh, if you find that you're, like I cut my hole pretty big here. Mm -hmm. If you find that you're, it doesn't really work, put another piece of paper between here, add a little bit more. Uh, or just add more it, tape. Or add more tape. More tape! Um, you could totally just do that a few times. That always works. More tape. And then your project is pretty much finished. You want to glue it together uh, if you want to go that way. A little bit of taper glue might be helpful just because I know th this other one here has slightly vibrated itself apart on a table. Um, but uh, once or twice. And then this is the Pete's version here. Just You can cut a little slot, uh, slot right there. To go through or you can just fold that down use a bit of clear tape i like the clear tape approach because it's easy mm -hmm. um, and then you have yourself another little classic macintosh so classic mac and then i'm just going to let this guy vibrate around so if you have any questions let us know there's a question what was the first computer First computer, Josh, what was it? I mean, depends. Do you call Alan Turing's code-breaking machine a computer? I think they were, I mean, are programmable looms considered? You know, that might be. Is the human brain a computer? <laughs> it computes. <laughs> I mean. I don't know. I, 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 if you want to go like modern it's times, maybe the Turing computer, the, like Alan oh. Turing's code-breaking machine. Yeah. Maybe like the first computer? Yeah. I mean, depends on what you, I guess modern day times, what do you find is a computer computer? The first home computer is really the Apple Apple here's, II. Here's the thing, Josh. We teach. We are teachers of science and art, and not uh, history. So uh, I was a history major, Pete. So <laughs> I don't know about you. As a history history major. Oh man. Uh, honestly, Cat. A lot of these three D design things was us trying out a bunch of different things to see what worked, and we've just been doing the same kind of five different design elements over and over and over again. I know. Uh, really, the big thing was using the maker tape really changed the way we could do things. Uh, we're still trying to find other ways of doing ma things with maker tape because like the uh, using the sticky side of the tape to do a tape loop battery approach or being able to do this uh, pressure fit on and off pull tab. Things that you couldn't do with copper foil, which is so easy to do with this because it's nylon, just it won't break. So once we figured a few things out like that, the fact we can bend things, fold things, we have a lot more leeway and flexibility and, and build options, a lot of it's easy. Like somebody recommended like, hey, you should totally um, do like a, a bracelet using maker tape as opposed to conductive thread. We're like, oh, yeah, you totally could. Yeah. And so we just sat down and did it in five minutes. Like that's really easy. It's a good idea. Yeah. And so that's a project on our website. 
and the 3D papercraft things, um, I actually came across a nice little, um, it's like a ladybug, three-dimensional ladybug that was vibrating around the table, probably very similar to the parts and design as this, but using copper foil. I can always, I was just imagining myself like, wow, that must have been really annoying because of how weak copper foil is trying to go around in three dimensions with that, especially since most copper foil is not conductive on the top and bottom, just only on the top, whereas the maker tape is reliably conductive on top and bottom, as you saw with us just laying it down on stuff. Um, so just, yeah, this the tape. It's the right part for the right job. That's the thing. If you have the right materials in front of you, it opens up a lot of possibilities. Otherwise, you just end up with a, a angry Springer Spaniel below a desk <laughs> groaning at you nonstop. So uh, so this is the project up on our website. It's been there for a bit. I suggest to Pete that we make a classic iMac, your Bondi Blue, like late 90s uh, iMac, because you got you got to have that, that new one. Or Pete could do a color classic too, because... <laughs> Or color classic. I guess classic two is only sold in Japan. I don't know why I know mm, these things. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, make a couple more of these because once the template's down, it's just adding, really adding the embellishments to there. And I think, yeah, we should add just a, um, a white version of this. Can up. Can do. That's easy. But yeah, we'll keep adding more projects. Uh, Pete is actually adding more um, step by step Arduino projects as well on our website as well that we're slowly working through for curriculum, yeah. and we're just yeah keep building stuff and making new cool things and we're going to try a few new lego things out here in a bit uh but yeah you can find these materials at browndowngadgets.com same with this stuff we'll be back here to actually won't be back here tomorrow we'll be doing something for maker Ooh, camp that's right um so maker camp on their facebook page we're going to be doing a uh, uh knife switch is what we're going to be doing tomorrow with them maker camp yeah maker doing camp that tomorrow yeah. there we go and then thursday we're back with another project and then friday showing off a few random things and kicking around the office um, but now one more from Cat here. There you nice, go. Nice. Now the solar Excellent. bug again. It was just the maker tape. Let us do add this this vibrating motor to a solar panel, easy peasy, yeah. without soldering. Something I would have thought of doing yeah. nine years ago. I did the solar cockroach kit. Mm -hmm. um, but just it's an easy way of making a soldering project non-soldering to be more applicable for a lot of classrooms or home use, especially right now with COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. Parents at home. Most parents don't have a soldering iron, nor do they want to spend even you know twenty bucks for a cheap soldering iron kit on Amazon. Yeah. Those are usually pretty bad, um, but doing it with tape makes it easy. Heck, we still got over here from before. We've got our uh, you know this is solar panel connected to <laughs> some maker tape with more maker tape. So it, yeah, good old tape. We really like using it. We like selling it. We like building projects with it. We like it when people ditch copper foil for it because it. <laughs> Saves a lot of heart, heartache in a classroom. So we'll get the heck out of here and go back to doing paperwork. Right. But if you have any questions, email us. We'll be back tomorrow with Maker Camp um, at noon Central Time. Uh, and then Thursday, we're back here at 3 o'clock doing another fun project. And then Friday at 3 as well. Typically, we do things at 3 o'clock. So we're cool. getting out of here. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Adios. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please visit BrownDogGadgets.com for parts, projects, and curriculum. Follow us on social media at Brown Dog Gadgets. Check out our live streams at Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We'll see you next time.